Welcome back to JP's Budget Collecting and our weekly look back at the hot comics from six months ago. This week we're looking back at the hot comics from March 26, 2021, and I'm recording this on September 24th, 2021. So always I give those dates so that you know when this information is most, most relevant because the market is always moving and changing. Uh, today's cold book could be tomorrow's hot and vice versa. So uh, also as always, we're looking back at the CBSI Hot Top 10 for that week and the Comic Tom Key Collector Hottest Trending Comics of the Week. They each put out a list of 10. Those are the books we look at. This week we got combined 15 books, so there was actually a lot of overlap between the lists this week. Um, we do this so that we can understand what factors made these books hot, uh, how they're doing in the market now, so everyone can make maybe a little better decisions about what books you chase, what books you're patient on. Um, so without further ado, let's get into these books and see if we can learn anything. Uh, first up, we have Tokyo Ghost, number one. Uh, this hit the list because it was optioned by Legendary Pictures. This is the Rick Remender, Sean Murphy um, book. And basically, back then when the option news came out, it went for, was going for $30 plus. Um, and it kind of cooled off. We got some other news about a month or so ago, like some updates of directors attached or something. I can't remember now. But it's still sitting 15 to 30, 9.8 sitting 2 to 220. So this book has definitely come back a little bit on the raw side, which is the vast majority of sales. It's been a bit of an I'll be back. Um, so still doing pretty well. It looks like the, there has been some progress on this, but it still ended up being an I'll be back, even with uh, continued progress toward actually making this a movie. And we're probably still a ways off. Um, next, we have Berserker number one. Uh, this is the one per store variant. Um, and basically, as this was coming out, this was the Keanu Reeves comic book. As this was coming out, they also announced, hey, there's going to be an animated show. There's going to be Keanu's attached to a live action movie. So this one per store was $100 immediately, basically. Uh, now it's a $75 to $100, $125 book ROM. So it's sitting in that same range, 9.8. 125 all the way to 250 here in the last month or so. I will say this is down from late July, early August. It was going for 300 plus for 9.8 back then. Uh, but the last several sales uh, in the last month or so, month and a half, um, have been way, way down from that. So it did kind of peak again back in the summer, but it's still, uh, still kind of a I'll be back overall, a little bit steady because um, it's in the same range, but definitely some opportunities to get this for a little bit less uh, since it first came out. Uh, next, we have Invincible number one. Uh, this was coming out. The new show was about to launch. Um, so this is a, obviously the first Invincible, first Omni-Man. Um, so this back then when the show was getting ready to come out, raw copies were going for $600 plus. A 9.8 was going for $2,500. Uh, now it's seven to $1,200 for a raw copy of the number one. A uh, 9.8 is going for $36 to $6,000. Um, pretty good range on that. I will say, I believe the $3,600 sale was a CBS, CBCS uh, one, but it was also an auction, just didn't quite go as high. So overall, though, still way up on this book. Um, the series was a hit. Uh, we know there's more coming, uh, and this book has continued to climb. Uh, pretty popular book. Um, next, we had kind of our hot indie of the week, um, and that was Cold Dead War number one. This was kind of a new zombie series written by George Romero's son that had a little bit of buzz, so people were checking this out. Uh, it was going for $15 right after release. Um, now it's going for five to 15. There's only one 9.8 sale, but that was only for 45. So basically the cost of slabbing it plus shipping. Um, so this one's definitely turned into an I'll be back. Haven't heard anything about the series since that initial buzz. Um, next we're gonna move into our two covers of the week. First up we have Harley Quinn, number one, the one per story Yoshitaki variant. Uh, this was on the list last week. Um, and actually, it's the same price as it was last week, $80 to $125 uh, for uh, raw copies back then. What happened was it was just on opposite lists. Um, it was going for the same value. Last week, it was on the CBSI list. This week, it was on the Comic Tom list. Um, so the value there at release was still basically the same. Now it's setting in a 50 to 120 book for raw copy. Uh, 9.8 will go 2 to 300. So pretty steady for raws, although some are down below those prices back then. Uh, so a bit of an I'll be back. Uh, still a really cool a cover. I kind of like, even though it's kind of, it's a little different, but I do kind of like it, but I wouldn't pay that much for it. But <laughs> I do kind of like it still. Uh, next we have Marvel number six. Uh, this is the Lee Bermejo 1 in 25 Silver Surfer cover. 
Um, it's kind of a homage to T2. Um, back then, raw copies jumped again in the second week. They were all the way up to $130 to $150. Um, so at that point, I was thinking, okay, they jumped two weeks in a row. They were going for way over one to 25 prices. This might end up being a street cash book, might continue to climb. Not the case. Uh, this one kind of, despite going that high, has fallen back to just about double the triple ratio. It's going 40 to $80 now. Uh, 9.8 will cost you 150 to 225. So still going for really good value, just didn't sustain those peaks of that second week after release. Um, next we have Deadpool number six, uh, the first appearance of Deadpool 2099, which was actually Deadpool's daughter, Warda Wilson. Um, this jumped up to a $10 book. Um, 9.8 went for 70. No real explanation as to why. I think there was talk about her coming back to the comics. Uh, being used again. Um, it was mostly driven by an increase in sales because this was on the Tom list. Uh, now it's a 5 to $15 book. So it's been basically an I'll be back. Um, it didn't really go that high to start with. Um, so I'm not sure exactly. They, I think, like I said, I think it was just that they thought they were going to use her again, but nothing really has come of this. So uh, next we have NYX number three, first appearance of Laura Kinney, X23. Um, this book jumped in the spring along with basically all the other X-Men books, which was disappointing for me because I was hoping to get one this year. <laughs> um, that has not happened. Um, but 9.8 hit 1500 back then, and this book has continued to kind of slowly creep up. 15 to 2100 now uh, for 9.8. Raw copies are costing you 375 to $700. Um, straight cast book, popular character. No real surprise here that this has continued to climb. Uh, Marvel's got her on the current X-Men team. Uh, yeah, so still a very popular book. Um, the rest of the list all has to do in some way or other with uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier that was coming out at this point. Uh, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven books. It's almost half the list uh, are Falcon and the Winter Soldier related. Uh, first up, we have Truth, Red, White, and Black. Number one, uh, the first appearance of Isaiah Bradley, the uh, Black Captain America. He did appear in the show, um, so that's why this hit the list. It was going for 50 to 80 plus back then. 9.8 was hitting 250. Um, now it's going for 20 to 50 dollars, and 9.8 is going for 150 to 200. Um, so this was one I was hoping. I kind of was hoping it was going would continue to go up or would at least hold, just because I thought like the story and stuff is probably worth it. But it didn't. It's become a little bit of an I'll be back. Um, Definitely down a little bit from the peak around the show, but still a really good book. Um, next, we have Captain America number 312, uh, first appearance of Flag Smasher. Um, so Flag Smasher was kind of the main uh, kind of villain antagonist of the show, um, although they did switch her to Carly instead of Carl. Um, but yeah, it was going for $50 to $100 back in the middle of the show. 9.6 was going for $325 to $400. Um, now raw copy is going for five to twenty five dollars. Nine point eight uh, is only going for two fifty. Sorry, it was nine point eight. Um, I think I, that was a typo. Nine point eight for was going for or three twenty five to four hundred. Now nine point eight is going for two fifty. Uh, so this one turned into a bit of a trap. Um, spoilers for the show until the next book comes out. But yeah, they did kill this character off, so that's part of why it has dropped back so much. Um, Next, we have Machine Man number seven, uh, first appearance of the Power Broker. Um, it, by this point of the show, um, they were just, it was at the, the name was mentioned in an Easter egg. Uh, then it got mentioned during the show. So it did, paid off, but not exactly how it does in the comics. Uh, Rock Hobbies back then were going for $35, $50. Now it's five to 50. So you're gonna be like, oh, still kind of in the same range, but there's only two sales in the last few months that have been for over $15. Uh, there is a $50 sale, there's like a $35 sale, and then everything else is under $15. So this is, I said it was going to be a trap, and for the most part it has been, but there are a couple sales that are kind of making it an I'll be back. Um, but yeah, this one just didn't, uh, paid off, but not in a way, different version of the character for sure than what was in the comics. Um, next we have uh, Thor 617. So I guess I was wrong. It was just all MCU stuff, not all fucking Winter Soldier stuff. So I looked at the list a little further. Uh, this is the first appearance of Kid Loki. 
um, had rumors that Kid Loki was going to be in the Loki series. Uh, spoilers, he was. Um, and this book was going for 50 plus back then, uh, in anticipation of the series. We're now several months behind the series and it's a 10 to $30 book. Uh, 9.8 is going for 100 to 200. Um, interestingly enough, this is really, this drop has really occurred basically since August. Um, in mid August, it was still pushing $50. 9.8 was still pushing 400. Uh, but like September, it has just dropped way back. Uh, the interest on this is finally like starting to slow down considerably. Um, next we have Daredevil number nine, the first appearance of Echo. Uh, this was when we first got rumors that she was going to get her own series in addition to appearing in the Hawkeye show. Um, back then, raw copies jumped to 150 to 200, 9.8 hit 800, and they're basically still going strong. It's continued to creep up 200 to $300 for a raw copy. 9.8 is 8 to 850. So just up a little bit, but definitely up. Uh, this book continues to be straight cash in anticipation of her appearance as part of the Hawkeye show and her own show. Um, next we have Captain America number seven. Uh, this is second print is the first appearance of the Daughters of Liberty team. It's kind of an all-female team with many of the members already in the MCU or expected to be coming. Uh, this includes, I think, like Sharon Carter and Sue Storm and Jessica Drew, and there's some others um, that are in this. Uh, back then, the second print jumped all because it's kind of hard to find, jumped all the way up to $100 to $175 because people thought, oh, they're going to use this. Um, now raw copies are twenty to thirty dollars. Um, huge drop. Uh, this is definitely. I predicted a trap, and that wasn't good enough. This is, yeah. If you jumped on this at one hundred and fifty, one hundred seventy-five dollars, then you way, way overpaid uh, for what this book has been worth to this point. Um, now at twenty bucks, you could get a nice copy. That might not be a bad little spec for Marvel, but again, it's kind of a team and not like an individual. So I usually focus on the individuals for me, but teach their own. Uh, and then finally, uh, our last book of the week is Astonishing Tales, number 25, first appearance of Deathlock. Basically, there were rumors that the Falcon and Winter Soldier showrunners were working on a Deathlock series. Uh, and kind of in an interview, they said something that made people think that maybe this was coming. Uh, rock copies were going for $185 back then. Uh, 9.6 hit $785. Interestingly enough, raw copies are actually down, although there is a couple really high-grade ones that went close to 200. It's mostly 50 to 200 is the range, but mostly under 100 um, for raw copies. But slabs, uh, 9.6 is now a 14 to $1,500 book. The slabs are up. So I kind of went with the slab sales here, up and kind of worth it. Um, so definitely this book has continued to climb uh, for sure. So at least on the slab side, the, the slab books are high-grade slabs have definitely continued to jump. So that is this week's list. It was really dominated by MCU and or rumors of the MCU. Um, I want to thank you guys for watching and we will catch you next time. Okay.